Hello and welcome to the course titled Introduction to Statistics. I am Samin Naqbi, the instructor for this course. As you know, it is a 12 weeks course. So before I begin, I would like to briefly go through the course content. The course is majorly divided into three broad modules. Where in the first module, you will learn about data collection, data summarization and data visualization. In the second module, you would understand sampling distribution of sample mean, sample variance and sample proportion for both single sample and double sample problems. Once you are equipped with the knowledge of these tools, I would move on to the data analysis part which covers point estimation, hypothesis testing and confidence interval estimation. So today we are going to begin with our first module that is on data collection. So the agenda for this week is that first we are going to identify that why should you take this course or why is, is it so important to study it. We will also see what is meant by this area statistics. Then we will move on to the data collection process where you will learn about what are the different types of variables in a given data set. It is equally important to identify and differentiate between the types of studies and also understand why sampling survey is a natural fit or a natural tool for us. Lastly, we will use a real world data set and see the implementation of these concepts using Python. Now, the first question that must have come to your mind is that why do you need to take this course or why should you study it? Is it going to benefit you or why should anyone learn about the subject statistics? The answer to all these questions is driven by the fact that we are living in what's often called a data driven world where every click, swipe or tap on our mobile devices is generating data. In fact, it is mind boggling to see how much data we are producing every second. So it is important to tap this raw data and extract meaningful information from it. And that is where statistics comes into picture. So wherever data is present, statistics will be involved. In fact, it has become an integral part of our lives from the moment we wake up in the morning and go to bed at night. For instance, when you get up in the morning, you might look at the weather app in your mobile phone to check whether it is going to be a rainy or a sunny day. So statistics is used in that app, right? Similarly, when you go to college or at work, you might come across a data set in, for your project and you have to analyze it. So statistics will be present there also. Similarly, teachers make use of statistics to analyze the performance of the students, whereas companies can use statistics to make informed decisions about their products and services. Later, when you come at home and when you watch some YouTube videos and you get recommendations based on what you have already liked before, so statistics is used there also. So in all these events, one thing is common, that is, they are not deterministic in nature. That is, you do not know the exact outcome beforehand. Rather, there is certain degree of uncertainty involved there. For instance, if you consider the traffic flow on any given road. Now, this traffic flow is highly unpredictable because it depends upon some probabilistic events such as accidents or road closures or the behavior of individual drivers. So all these factors influence that whether how much jam or traffic jam you are going to experience when you are going to office or to college, right? Similarly, when you visit some supermarket or you go to some amusement park, you might have experienced different queues. Now, if you see that the length of the queue varies at different point of the day. Why? Because these lengths are influenced by factors such as the arrival of the customers and the rate at which they are served. 
next if you look at the arrival time or the waiting time of for the bus now that is also unpredictable right because there also you have traffic and weather conditions which play a role in determining how much time you would have to wait for the bus to arrive if we consider on a larger scale if we look at the spread of the disease like we all have experienced covid 19 so there also if you can recall then the spread of the disease was depending upon the contact rates the vaccination rate and the individual immunity right so all these probabilistic events were playing a role in determining the transmission of the disease another situation can be of stock prices we all know that stock prices are highly dependent upon the individual's investor sentiment right they also depend upon the economic news or the performance of the company so in all these situations what you see is that they are all probabilistic events right and one can use statistics to easily model them which now brings to our next question that is what is statistics statistics is basically the science of learning from data and how can you learn from data you can do so by following the four fundamental steps the first is you have to collect the data summarize it visualize it and then analyze and interpret the results now see that once you have collected the data you need to summarize it because just keeping raw data in the form of excel sheets won't be of any use so you need to know what are the appropriate summary measures right and once you have summarized it it is equally important to learn some visualizing tools also because it will help the clients to understand through figures and graphs it will have a higher impact on the client and lastly you need to analyze and interpret properly that is the core of this process of learning from data right even if one of the steps goes wrong over here your analysis would be affected so that is why it is not always the analysis it is the first three steps which are playing an important role right if you do not collect the data properly your summary measures would be incorrect right you if you do not differentiate between different summary measures and you just apply the wrong measure and visualize it in the wrong way then how your analysis will be good that will also be impacted so all these four steps are equally important so it is important for you to learn how to collect interpret display and report your results should the data be displayed as histogram or a bar chart because these two are different from each other and they are also dependent upon the variable type so you should be able to distinguish between different visualizing tools as well next which analysis technique is best suited for your problem because once you have identified the problem and you do not apply the correct analysis tool or technique then your final analysis is definitely going to be impacted by that so it is important for you to follow all these things and do it we come to the data collection process here the first step is to identify the variables of interest so for any given problem this is the first step that you have to do now this brings us to the question that are there different types of variables and if yes what are those variables next you need to identify an appropriate study for your problem whether you are going to conduct an observational study or you are going to conduct an experiment further what is the difference between these two types of studies and when you should perform them next when you come to the data collection process you need to identify whether you are going to be opting for the sampling survey or you would be collecting of data from all the individuals in the population that is you are going to conduct a census so in this week we are going to dissect this data collection process by finding the answers to these questions so let us begin with our first question that what are the different types of variables 
all the variables can be categorized into either numerical variable or categorical variable. Now, numerical variables are also referred to as quantitative variables, whereas categorical have the name qualitative variable. Now, the numerical variables are those which represent some measurable quantities. Okay? So, you can quantify something using those variables. And if you further categorize them, they, it, you have discrete variable and continuous variables. So, in case of discrete variables, these variables take on specific distinct values. For instance, if I consider the number of students who have enrolled in this course, then it will be a discrete variable. Similarly, if there is any student who has opted for multiple courses from NPTEL platform, then how many courses has he registered on the platform is again a discrete variable. Or if you consider the marks attained by the student in this course, then again it is a discrete variable. Okay? On the other hand, continuous variables are those which take on infinite number of values within a given range. For instance, the height of an individual. Why? Because height of an individual can take on infinite number of values between the range say 510 or 511. And if you want to have more precise measurements, then you can go up till inch and then centimeters and so on. Other examples include weight of an individual or you can consider the temperature. So, all these are continuous variables. Now, we come to the categorical variables. See, in categorical variables, what we do is that we divide the data into different categories or labels. And again, it is further classified into nominal and ordinal. Where the name nominal suggests that you will have classification, you will have groups, but there will be no inherent ordering between those categories. For instance, if you consider the blood type, now the blood type can be, it can be A, B, A, B, O, or you can consider positive, O positive, O negative. So, these are the categories. If you have a data set, then you can categorize those individuals basically on the basis of the blood type. You will have certain number of individuals in each category, but you cannot order them. You cannot say that one blood type is superior to the other one. So, it means that there is no inherent ordering present in these variables. Or the other example can be the hair color. It can have, you can have the categories as black or gray or brown or red, different shades, right? So, all of them, again, these are the categories, but there is no ordering between them. However, if you consider the ordinal variable, you can look at the name and immediately identify that yes, here the categories will also be there plus there will also be an inherent ordering between those categories. For instance, if you consider, as, consider the level of education, then we know that first you will have high school, then you will go to intermediate or then you will do bachelor's or master's and PhD. So, these, this level of education, there is an ordering between them. You know that master's degree is superior than your bachelor's degree or you can say that your PhD is a highest degree. So, you can order them. Similarly, if you visit any uh, website or sometimes if you visit any supermarket, so they ask for your feedback and there they give you the options such as unsatisfactory, satisfactory or neutral or highly ap appreciated and all those cases are there. So, there if you see these markings will tell the company or the owner that whether the individuals if they are more satisfactory individuals then the it is good for the company however if the feedback is on the negative side that will give that will also be helpful for the company and right and give you them the idea to improve their product so in these categories there is an order so these are the major types of variables that are present now, we consider an example over here. Suppose there is a school in which they have the data for all the students enrolled there and this small data set from 7th grade. So, here if you look at the first row, we have the name of the student, 
then attendance is there so which is out of 30 days of the month then we have academic performance eye color and height now in this data set what you can see is that you can identify the different types of variables remember that identifying the type of variable is essential for you to perform the correct analysis later on right so you need to distinguish between the types of variables for instance if we look at the first column then the first column attendance this is a discrete variable because how many now it tells the number of days a student is present in the class and you can see these values over here similarly if now i move to the academic performance suppose the academic performance their categories are varying from bad average good excellent and so on so what is this type of variable so academic performance th these are the categories and yes they have an order also because you can go f you know that excellent is the best option right below that if the performance is good then you know that yeah the student is performing on an average and then so on next if you go to the next column then you have eye color eye color yes there are categories black brown green and hazel these are the categories but here you cannot tell what is the ordering between them you cannot order these types of colors so what can you do is that what is this type of variable this is a nominal variable finally we come to the last column where the heights are there so height as we have already discussed heights can, are the continuous variables right so for the given data set you need to identify the types of variables now note that there are certain categorical variables which appear numerical but in fact it is not actually true so there are several examples for that for instance if you consider the pin code now we know that pin codes are what these are these represent some geographical region now these codes can be two double two triple zero one double two one triple zero and so on now if you look at these these appear to be numbers but these are actually categories only they are not numerical variables because you cannot perform any arithmetic operations on them and extract meaningful information so whatever arithmetic operations you do it will not be meaningful so these are just the placeholders for having or con containing the information of that region these are just the placeholders you consider the mobile number then mobile numbers are also in the same way they are actually categorical variables because if you perform any arithmetic operation using those numbers it won't make any sense so mobile numbers are also categorical although they appear numerical so they just contain information of the individual in that so this is all about different types of variables that we have and it is important to get a thorough understanding of this types of variables although it is a very simple topic and i believe that you must be know, having information of this but since it is a part of your uh, learning from data so i have included it over here